Hello everyone, welcome back to the FT Share channel. Have you ever ridden a train? Have you ever noticed how trains move on the tracks perfectly? Maybe some of you have thought about and questioned the same thing. In this video, we'll explain one of the parts of a train that many people don't know much about, how train wheels work. Does anyone know? If that's the case, let's learn together. At first glance, train wheels might look like perfect cylinders, but if we take a closer look, we'll see that the wheels are actually slightly conical in shape. We think this conical shape is pretty impressive. It helps the train move in the right direction and also makes it easier for the wheels to turn. To get a better understanding of the first achievement, we'll look at some examples of train wheels with different shapes. First, there's the perfect cylinder shape. Second, there are train wheels shaped like cones, as we discussed earlier. Third, there are wheels shaped like cones, but in the opposite direction. First, we'll start with the train wheels that are perfectly cylindrical. As the train moves forward, its wheels also rotate. However, when it encounters a sloping track or a curve, these cylindrical wheels will go off the track and cause the train to derail. It's important to remember that train tracks are different from the tracks of other vehicles like cars. Maybe with car wheels that are perfectly cylindrical, they can move smoothly because the tires are made of rubber and cars move on roads that don't have boundaries like train tracks. So perfectly cylindrical train wheels just aren't suitable for train tracks. But some of you might be wondering, is that for train wheels without flanges? What about using flanges? That's a great question. To answer it, we'll first discuss all types of wheels. Next, we'll look at the conical-shaped train wheels and the conical-shaped wheels in the opposite direction. These have two conical-shaped train wheels, but with different orientations. To see the differences, we'll simulate both on the tracks. Can you see the difference? It's pretty clear when both are on sloping and curving tracks. Wheels with inverted cone shapes are more likely to lose balance and go off track. On the other hand, properly shaped conical wheels are more stable and less likely to derail. Why is this? Let's learn more to make it easier to understand. As we saw in the previous simulation, conical shaped wheels will stay on track. The conical shape allows the wheels to create an angle with each other, which automatically balances them out. To get a better understanding of this, we need to look at the forces acting on the wheels when they're moving on a straight track. The reaction force on the wheels will always be perpendicular to the conical surface, even if there are disturbances or obstacles pushing it to the other side. Why is that? This is because when the wheels are in the middle, the horizontal components of these forces cancel each other out. So what about the sloping tracks that cause the wheels to move to the right or left? Something pretty interesting happens with train wheels when they move along the axis. Have you ever noticed this? It's pretty clear from this picture that the whole set of train wheels will tilt. This tilt also affects the normal force. If we look at the forces in this situation, we can see that there will be a force pointing to the left or towards the inside of the track. This force automatically brings the wheels back to the center of the track. As the wheels get closer to the center, this self-aligning force will start to fade away. To make sure the wheels are safe, flanges are added to both sides of the wheel. I think we've got to wrap up the discussion about cylindrical wheels. Cylindrical wheels don't have a balancing point like conical wheels, so attaching flanges to them still makes them less perfect when on the tracks. So what do you think? Isn't that a pretty cool technique? Now let's chat about why engineers give a conical shape to train wheels. The reason is that this shape allows for differential action. Just picture this. A train needs to turn. So, the left wheel has to travel a longer distance than the right wheel. But since the wheels are connected by the same axle, how can one wheel travel a greater distance than the other? This is where the conical shape really comes into its own. To get a turn, the wheels will just nudge the left a little. If we think about where the wheels touch the ground, the left wheel has a bigger circle than the right wheel. 
In short, the left wheel will cover a greater distance for the same angular rotation, which is what we call differential action. It's important to know that to get differential action in cars, engineers have to separate the wheels and rotate them at different speeds. But on trains, they get the same effect by giving the wheels a conical shape. Isn't that interesting? Of course, when the wheel shifts to the left, it automatically generates a force to the right, as we've seen before. During a turn, this force creates the centripetal force needed for the turn. So the wheel won't shift back to the center during the turn. And the same goes the other way around. All right, that's a wrap on the discussion in this video. As usual, if anyone has any suggestions or feedback, please feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.